Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Helena from the Global Health Network, and we're going to get started now. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone who has joined on Zoom to this first lecture in the Global Health Network's Global Health in Focus series titled, Why is it important for health researchers to engage school students? Um, and that will be delivered by Alan Davis from the Kemri Wellcome Trust Research Programme in Kenya. Um, this first lecture is particularly special as we are delighted to have Alan with us, um, a fantastic topic as it also launches the school engagement theme area on MeSH and you can see the uh, web address for that new school engagement theme area in the, on the slide that's visible and also in the chat box, so please do visit. Um, this space is a, intended to become a growing practice and community for school engagement and we hope and look forward to growing this area with you over the coming months and years. Um, on the screen you can see the details for the page and also uh, Twitter information for the Global Health Network and for Alan. Um, please tweet us using the hashtag Global Health in Focus. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we will open for questions using the chat function um, at the end of Al's presentation, so please use that to ask any questions. Um, this lecture is being recorded and we'll share it on MeSH afterwards, so if you'd like to share it uh, amongst friends and colleagues, please do. And I'd now like to uh, give a warm welcome to Alan Davis from the Kemri Wellcome Trust Research Programme in Kenya. Um, Alan established the Schools Engagement Programme um, at Kemri Wellcome, which has now been active for over 10 years. Um, their engagement activities are conducted with students and teachers from across Kenya in Kalifi and Nairobi and are aimed at promoting a mutual understanding between researchers and the community, as well as a positive attitude towards science education. The programme has gone from strength to strength and now works with over 50 schools across Kenya to interact with science and scientists. And it also inspires young people raising their interest in science related careers and to conduct future health research. Um, I won't go into more detail as um, Alan will be sharing with you the school engagement program at Kemri. Um, so I'm delighted to hand over to Al to deliver um, his lecture on health researchers and engagement with school students. Um, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. So yeah, thanks for joining this morning or this afternoon. Um, the purpose of, of this um, talk is threefold, really. Um, first, I'm going to try and describe some of the approaches um, for engagement between health research and school children around the world and some of um, the goals that, that people have um, aimed at in engaging with, with school students. Um, secondly, I'm, I'm going to try and answer the question why it's important for health researchers to engage school students. Um, drawing mainly from experience um, and evidence from Kenya. Um, and thirdly, as Helena um, suggested earlier, it gives me a chance to promote um, the new platform for practitioners of, of school engagement that, that's um, hosted by the um, Global Health Network through their MeSH platform, which is, if you haven't joined, joined up, is, it's a fantastic resource for community and public engagement with health research. Um, <clears throat> so, um, over the last kind of 10 years or so, there's been an increasing interest in promoting science education in, in high income countries with some of the major funders ploughing lots of money into promoting science education. But also, as, as kind of highlighted in a meeting we held about a year ago in Kilifi, we held a, a first meeting for practitioners of, of um, um, school engagement where 25, sorry, 29 participants from 17 institutions in, in 10 countries um, came to Khalifi to share their experiences of engagement. And that in itself suggests that, that there's a growing field of engagement between health researchers and schools. Um, so why should we engage with, with school students? Well, um, in Kenya, similar to other kind of low middle income countries, um, st young children and students between the ages of 20 to 24 make up about a third of the population. 
Um, and this is quite a sizable population. And if you, if you think about these people becoming the parents, um, the research participants, and also the scientists of the future, it becomes a significant and important um, population to engage with. And there are three main reasons for doing that. Um, first of all, from a science education point of view, um, according to science education literature, um, field visits to laboratories, meeting scientists, is actually beneficial for student science education. Um, engagement has the possible possibility to attract uh, talented young people to the field of science and health research for the future. Um, and also in a country like Kenya, you know, if researchers themselves don't engage with, with school students, then you have to ask the question as well, who, who will? Um, secondly, from a community engagement perspective, engaging um, students offers an opportunity to raise community appreciation and awareness of research. Um, address rumours, potentially influence community support for research and perhaps more importantly to draw from unique perspectives of adolescents and young people in order to improve the way that we implement research. And thirdly, um, we, I'll show a bit later that, that um, researchers themselves, individual researchers themselves can benefit from engaging with, with students and young people. So at our meeting in kind of late, towards the end of 2018 in, in Kilifi, um, the, um, the participants shared the ways in which they um, engaged with school students. As you can see from this graphic, um, a range of, of activities were described at that meeting. I won't go through all of those um, approaches, but just to highlight a few. Um, colleagues in, in Thailand and Cambodia used drama, to engage children and villages with, with um, malaria research. Um, in Vietnam, as one means of engaging school students, um, the researchers there have contributed monthly to a national science, engage, um, science um, schools magazine, reaching out to tens of thousands of people monthly. Um, a, a group called the Science Spaza in South Africa have initiated I think about 200 um, science clubs um, and here in Kenya we, we conduct as one of our activities a, a series of lab tours for, for local school students. Um, so when we ask practitioners to, to share the reasons why they, they engaged with um, school students, we got three sets of um, goals which are obviously overlapping um, first of all, we had community and public engagement goals, such as you know, stimulating dialogue about health research, raising awareness um, and respecting local culture. Um, we also had a group of health promotion goals, um, for example, raising awareness of diseases, awareness of diseases and ways to prevent them. And thirdly, we had a group of goals related to science education, um, for example, um, raising an interest in science and an interest in science careers. Um, the latter group, health promotion goals and science education goals, were largely seen as means of providing benefits to local schools. Ultimately, community engagement goals worked its way up towards ultimately improving health through influencing health policy. Um, uh, and science education goals were seen as a potentially strengthening capacity for science and for health research and that would um, not only contribute to improving health in the long-term future but also contributing to, to the future of science in general. Um, if you're interested in, in these goals and these different approaches we, we've, um, we've published just recently published a paper about it you can get that on the Welcome Open platform. So moving back to Kemri Welcome Trust program in Kenya and how, what, what are our approaches of, of um, engaging schools? Well, similar to what I've described earlier, we've got three overarching goals for, for um, engaging school students. We've got science education goals, 
Um, secondly, we've got attracting future scientists. Obviously, there's, there are overlaps between those two goals. And thirdly, we've got community engagement goals. Um, we've got three components to our school engagement program. Um, we've got a secondary schools component um, in which we facilitate interactions between about 4,000 students every year in schools in Khalifi and Nairobi. We do this through science competitions, lab tours, um, school visits, online interaction. And we also have kind of closer, more um, intense engagement through our young persons advisory groups. And that kind of enables us to draw from these unique um, perspectives that young people have. Um, secondly, over a couple of years ago now, we've, we've started working with primary schools, setting up um, science clubs to raise an interest in science. Um, we're currently rolling that out to 10 schools and the plan is to um, upscale that further again to schools across the county in Khalifi um, through teacher training. And thirdly, I guess several people have called this within the programme, have called this the, the flagship of our school engagement programme, the School Leavers Attachment Scheme. And basically we attract nine, select nine very talented students from Kilifi um, and um, invite them for a three month attachment at the centre where they get different aspects of, of experience of research. We're in our 11th cohort so far. Um, and we've hosted 89 students over the last 10 years. Um, I'll just show you, I don't know if this will work, I'm ho hoping somebody will, will let me know if it doesn't work, but I'll, I'll, I'll just show you a quick video just to give you some, some idea of, of what it's like. The Amo Scientist Get Me Out of Here event is a, uh, an event that involves scientists communicating with Kenyan students in high school and the students get to vote who is their favorite scientist and everyone else gets to get out of there. It's a very easy thing to do, just question and answer to students. It's also helping the students to develop some skills which I, I, I think is needful for them. It allows for scientists to communicate what they do with students and pupils to inspire and encourage them to be like scientists. I used to think that scientist people are only white people and I used to think that scientist people are only people from the olden days. But I came to know that scientist people can come from any part of the world. It's actually exposing me to the world of science and I'm proud of that. I would like to pursue clinical medicine as my career. I'd like to be an engineer. I want to pursue farmers architectural studies. I would want to be an aeronautical engineer. It's my hope that I'll gain experience. Gain more confidence. Learn more about medicine. I hope to acquire the necessary skills and knowledge in research. I would like to build on my confidence, self-esteem. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so this all looks brilliant and great and all that stuff but what what's the evidence that there's that you know engaging schools engaging with schools contributes to any of the stuff i've talked about um science education capacity strengthening and community engagement um i'm, I'm not going to go through this in, in great detail but it's just to kind of 
highlight that our activities, all our, our school's activities are linked to, um, well, at the, kind of lead towards the foundational ethical principles of research, beneficence, justice, and respect for persons through a whole range of pathways, outputs, and outcomes. Um, and we, we, um, we evaluate using a combination of pre and post student surveys, combining impact um, of engagement against control groups. Um, we have a co qualitative component involving teachers, students, researchers and parents and also we have a participatory um, video project where we give cameras to students where they can um, share their um, doc and document their experiences of, of um, engaging with researchers and we also kind of tightly monitor all the activities that we do if you're interested in any of this um, in more detail we we've published in a couple of places um, so how does engaging um, school students contribute to science education. Um, so this is um, th this this graph gives gives an example of um, the survey that we conducted, um, where students were given um, several questions related to attitudes to science, and they were able to respond to them using strongly agree, dark green here, agree, disagree and strongly disagree in, in brown here. Um, this is their, on the left is their pre-engagement response and on the right here is their post-engagement. We also did the same with a, a group of controls who didn't undergo any, any engagement until the following year. Um, and, it's, and what we found is that um, post-engagement students are, are more likely to um, strongly agree with the statement biology is fun and this is consistent against uh, with with another group of with a, um, a whole group of other statements as well. What's particularly interesting with this and the the, the change between pre and post was statistically significant. Um, what's interesting is that we we observed the complete the opposite kind of trend for the for the control group, um, and that's kind of classically seen in in um, science education literature that that. Um, attitudes towards science um, generally dwindles with with age for for um, students. Um, we also had um, plenty of qualitative uh, evidence which supported this quantitative findings. I'll give you some examples here. First of all, the students really enjoyed themselves. One student here saying, "I saw the apparatus that we learn about here in school, like the microscope. We had not seen them before, like the electric microscope." Another student saying, we were taken to Camry and I saw how people are doing that type of work. It really motivated me and I, say, and I said, uh, then I will also work hard to, to do this kind of, of, of work. And this is fairly typical, um, what we hear with, with, from students after, after engagement. Um, th it's not just in our, um, in our space in Khalifi and, and, and Nairobi where we've found this, there's growing evidence in other places notably the work of, of Kath Woods Townsend in um, Southampton in the UK. It's worth checking those um, papers out. So capacity strengthening, I mean there's lots of research around that, that, that show that and I'm going to, going to refer to our attachment scheme here. There's, there's a, a, quite a few attachment schemes around the world for school leavers um, and Many studies document changes in attitudes and changes in reported um, shifts in, in career desires for students. But what I'm going to show you is, is actual, you know, the actual tra tra trajectories of, of some students. Now you have to forgive me that this slide is, is from last year, so it's a bit, it's a bit kind of old, it's from this time last year. Um, and as you can see from this table, we've got quite a large group of, of students who've come back to um, research related courses at university following their, their um, attachment period at Kemri. Um, we also had down the bottom here, and th this is only, you have to bear in mind that quite a few of these um, students are still, still in undergraduate, but several of these post um, university have come back for 
postgrad attachment and internship. Um, and we've got quite a few success stories that we're particularly proud of. We've got three students who we supported to win scholarships by YORSA, the Young Scientists, Young Scientists for Africa. And they were they won a scholarship to attend the London, I'm oh, sorry, it's too small, I can't see. Um, that is basically a, a, um, a, an engagement with science fortnight in, in London, hosted by the LIYSF, um, where they, they were able to meet world-class scientists. Um, secondly, we've had, we're particularly proud of Cla Claudia Kahindi, and this kind of highlights that we have students to go on to do other things as well, but we do provide support in terms of um, um, writing reference letters. In 2013, she, she was with us as a student. She won a scholarship to do a degree in Connecticut in, in, in the States to do law. And just recently, she, she's won a Rhodes Scholarship to study jurisprudence in Oxford University. Back to science. Um, we've had Rehema Gorna, who was with us in 2011. Um, she came back in 2019 to do a postgraduate diploma um, with the Kemri Welcome program. Um, she became an assistant research officer in 2019, did lots of research on, on um, mosquito genetics. We've got um, Jacob Kazungu, who did this attachment in 2011. Um, and he's gone through the different attachment schemes at Kemri. He, he won a Welcome Trust Master's Fellowship and he's currently doing his, he's come back to the program um, in Nairobi where he's, he's doing a post-master's research on universal healthcare. And we've got quite, quite a few more who, who are you know, on definite on the research career pipeline. So we're very proud of, of those. So what about community engagement? What's the, what's the, you know, what's the evidence that engaging school students contributes to community or public engagement? Well, we've got plenty of evidence that it raises an understanding of research. In this particular example here, students gave their responses pre and post engagement to the statement, Kemri researchers must get permission from a committee in Nairobi before doing research with people. As you can see, post engagement, there's a shift towards well, from strongly agree towards, sorry, from strongly disagree towards strongly agree um, following engagement. That was statistically significant and no change was seen in the control group. So that kind of highlights that engaging with school students can raise um, students' understanding of some of the ethics of, of research. Um, we've got other examples of the way in which it can, can contribute to um, understanding of research as well. This, this was a, a, a video made by, um, this is a piece of a video made by a student who had undergone engagement um, and he, he said in one of his films, can we do research of different diseases such as malaria and pneumonia? They have come up with means and ways of preventing and curing them for the benefit of Khalifi residents. Um, another thing Another thing which is harder to measure, we've got 80 students, by, well actually 89 students by now, who have gone through th um, three months of attachment. You can imagine that, that spending three months at the research institution, um, they learn quite a lot about research and the institution and they go back to their communities as resource people and that must contribute to um, community engagement. Um, we also have indicators of changing attitudes towards research. In this example, reducing fear of researchers, um, where students were asked to respond to, I fear talking to a Kemri researcher before and after. And you can see here that there's a shift towards disagreement to the statement, I fear talking to a Kemri researcher. And again, we had lots of qualitative evidence to support this. Um, one student saying, we thought when we came to Kemri, maybe you would keep us enclosed and bleed us. But when we reached there, it was nothing like that. Um, a, sec a second student saying, and this kind of highlights the kind of diffusive effect of, of, of 
engaging with students and the impact it has on the wider community perhaps um, where he said I've already talked to the people who had rumors about research they were talking of research participants eyes being removed so I explained to them it's not that way um, Kemri have come to investigate diseases like um, malaria um, and there are lots of examples of um, the way in which engaging school students can address goals of, of community engagement. I've just put a few here, mainly from colleagues in, in um, Thailand and um, Cambodia. So my, my argument is that learning about a combination of learning about health research for students, increased confidence in questioning researchers, less fear of researchers, I argue all these together increases the cap capacity for, for future engagement for young people and students. And why is this important? Well, if you have, if you have a group of um, students who are knowledgeable in research, they understand research and they're confident to share their views, then you can facilitate consultations or young person's advisory group that can feed into, that you can draw their perspectives to feed into the way in which research is being implemented. I've got a few examples of these. Um, consultations with students have um, given us a better understanding of what students and their parents feel about consent and assent and this has, has kind of changed the way in, in which we address consent and, and assent with, with um, children in, in Kenya and, and also it's bound to have um, broader impact because some of these findings were shared through um, the Nuffield Council for Bioethics research involving children. Um, our young persons advisory group have also um, had discussions with our biobanking group and that combined with other community members views um, can advise us and inform us on how we govern our biobanking. Um, we're also in the process of drafting a book for secondary schools that will highlight 10 outstanding health researchers from, from Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and we've been able to consult our young persons advisory group to advise us on how we should do this and to read drafts and give their opinion. So, you yeah, know, these, these YPAGs are really kind of impacting the way we think about engagement and the way that we, we potentially do research with young people. So what do individual researchers gain from um, the, in the engagement? Um, so we, we conducted over two qualitative studies involving 27 researchers um, and we had four main findings really. Um, researchers, I mean, I, and you have to remember that in a context like Kenya where schools are relatively um, poorly resourced and juxtaposed next to it is, is a fairly wealthy um, research institution. Researchers really felt that they needed to give, that they felt that they wanted to give something back to the community and participating in, in school engagement activities gave them that opportunity. Secondly, um, it gave researchers an opportunity to kind of strengthen their ties to the community and feel part of that community through contributing. Um, thirdly, it gave researchers a chance to kind of gain a better understanding of the, of the cultural and social context in, in which they work. Um, and lastly, it gave them insights into their own knowledge about their research um, and the way they communicated that research. So just to summarise some of that evidence, um, school engagement has, um, we feel, um, contributed to um, promoting um, science education, promoting an interest in, in science career and also we have um, direct kind of evidence of people moving into science careers. Um, secondly, it's offered an op opportunity to kind of dialogue about research with young people. We've seen that that kind of can spread on, um, to the broader community. But also, and perhaps more importantly, it's allowed us to be able to draw from the unique perspectives of young people um, to the way 
towards the way in which we run research. And lastly, um, it's, it's enabled researchers to, to benefit from the engaging young people. Okay, um, so engaging schools is absolutely essential, according to me, and I hope I've managed to persuade a few of you that, that, is, that, that you, to agree with me. But where should you find out more about this? Um, Helena talked about this earlier. I don't know if you, if you haven't seen the Mesh website, it's well worth having a look and well worth joining. Um, I've, I've highlighted the the um, the um, what's that? The the web address there. If you go to themes, we've finally made it. School engagement has finally made it. I'm very very happy and proud of this. We have our own theme now. If you click on that, you will get to the um, school engagement page. It's the beginnings, it's the skeletons. We hope that if, if there are um, school engagement practitioners out there, they will find this useful and they will also share their, um, some of their resources on this. It's got some fabulous graphics um, from colleagues from, from the Global Health Network have, have helped us with that. And I'm very grateful for your support for that. Um, Obviously, there's lots of people who, who've been involved and contributed to some of the stuff in this um, presentation. Um, the main funder for my work and for that meeting was the Wellcome Trust, who've been incredibly supportive throughout um, the last 10 years of, of um, establishing um, the school's engagement programme in, in Kenya.